put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Man of Steel. 3D Moon Review. The days of the planet Krypton are numbered and is in single digits at this point. The... I, I won't go too much into details because this is... this does flesh out some of what... For example, the 78 film only hints at, but some of it you basically already know. General Zod and some of his companions are trapped in penis pods and sent to the Phantom Zone, and Jor-El and Lara send Kal-El, their newborn, excuse me, to Earth in an attempt to save at least one Kryptonian. And this is where we pick up with Clark back on Earth. It, the, once the film has established that he was sent as an infant, it actually kind of it jumps ahead to him as an adult. And we get a number of flashbacks to his childhood and youth over the course of the film. And Basically, he's trying to find his place in the world. He, he, this is the more angsty take on the character because that's the kind of, you know, comic book hero movie that gets made these days. And yeah, basically he's trying to figure out where does he fit in. He's always felt apart from human beings. And he is he's having trouble not saving people basically he he can't quite keep the secret even though he he feels that he should maybe and lois lane gets you know some yeah she she tries to find if find out if there really is something to all these urban legends about yeah this this young man who can do things that human beings normally can't do and that pretty much is all I should say that brings us nicely into the movie as for the plot as I like to do with these big anticipated, hyped movies, I'm gonna try to start off with some kind of just some, some grounding, just give you an idea of at least how I perceive the movie as far as what it, how it fares as compared to expectations. If you are just going in for a Superman movie, if you want to see Superman kick ass and take names, definitely watch this it will very much deliver that. And if you want, you know, an, an interesting, more, more in-depth take on the character, and one that really looks at, yeah, is, is trying to find an identity and growing up as being, you know, a more realistic take, a less I idyllic, you know, the, the original, comic book take where he's just revered right from the get-go. As far as I recall, it's been a while since I read the old comics, but yeah, this kind of goes into that. That's, yeah, again, very much, I, I would recommend it for that. I will say that, as 
far as the critics go, I think some of them are being a bit harsh on it. I, I really tried to see their point of view on this, and in some cases I can, but I really, I really have to address these comparisons to Michael Bay. Okay, I, I have not watched the Transformers movies. I suppose I haven't watched a Michael Bay movie since Bad Boys 2. You know why? Because that one was enough. I don't need to see. I, I hear what critics that I respect the opinion of describe the Transformers movies as I see clips you know, I I get what they're like. I really don't need to actually see that for myself. I, other other people can live through that pain for me. I, I greatly appreciate that. This is not Michael Bay. The action... What I will say about it is, there are definitely some scenes, some action scenes, that really didn't need to be there. They, they start off in, with, with a certain situation, and then at the end of it, we're basically at the status quo. We, nothing has really changed, and that's not really a good thing for an action scene, or in general, a scene in a movie. That's, that's kind of the... That's, that's the kind of thing that goes on the cutting room floor, if, if you're being really brutally economical with your, with your movie running time. Yes, some of these action scenes did not need to be there, and some of them... There's at least one too many, like, I've, I've heard some critics, I think it was the, the, the TYT guys, you know, the, the What The Flick reviewers, who mentioned that it, it kind of, it keeps having the, oh, this is going to be the final fight, oh, wait, there's another fight. Yeah, that does happen, at least some. Other than that, I, I'll say, some, some of them said that it was like extremely repetitive. I will say, yeah, they go through walls a lot, and that really did not quite need to happen. And other than that, it's not that terribly repetitive. There's too much of it, as I've already said, and honestly, some of it is a bit generic, or is too reminiscent of other action scenes that have done well. I'm not going to give away which ones here. But other than that, I mean... When I reviewed the Total Recall remake, I talked about how the movie's action is just overpowering. You just stopped and, and you're just like, okay, just... You know what? You're, you're, you just keep going. Keep going. I'll just... I'll, I'll try to zone out because this is just too much. I, I can't... Human beings need breathing room. This movie gives breathing room. The, the action scenes don't go on for too long for you to, you know... I, I never completely stopped caring. Maybe, maybe at the very last action scene. That, that one really didn't need to happen, I feel. But other than that, really, really not an, an issue with the, the, the pacing. And there is great drama in between these action scenes. I will say, the running time will scare off some people. Yes, the not counting the end credits, this is two hours and 32 minutes long. So, that... 12 minutes long, sorry. I, yeah, two hours and 12 minutes long, not counting the end credits. But it's f quite fast-paced. I've already mentioned it does start with um, on Krypton, but you don't really feel like it spends too long there. You don't. You don't really want scenes to end again, other than maybe some of these action scenes. It it keeps things moving, and yeah, it it takes a while. It's it's an origin story, and. Gee, we just can't have enough of those these days. But long before he dons the suit, 
he's still doing cool stuff. He's still saving people. He's still doing Superman stuff. He's just not wearing the, the cape and all. And, and yes, he, you know, apparently was just, you know, a couple of miles up in the air before he realized that he forgot to put on, you know, the, the red underpants. I hate when that happens. I imagine that he was just in a rush to get away from all the Mandarin fans that Iron Man 3 ticked off, and I can't really blame him. But, but yeah, it, it keeps things moving quite nicely and without going too fast either. I really want to talk some more about the drama because really when, when you look at the casting of this movie, you really notice, I mean, you've got Kevin Costner and Diane Lane in two not really, not starring roles, you know, Ma and Pa Kent. Yeah, re reverse order there, but whatever. And it was a great idea to cast them. They're, they're not distracting, and you needed great actors for those roles. You will see why in the movie. They're, the I'll go so far as to say there's there is actually there are layers to some of these scenes between Kal-El slash Clark Kent and his parents, both pairs. It's it's really, really well done. And yes, Russell Crowe Crow as Jor-El also very, very good performance. He really has the gravitas. I mean, dudes pick it up after Marlon Brando. I don't envy him. Not that I would, because I'm not an actor, but yeah, it is. And, and he really does give the, the role a, a good, strong... You, you really feel Superman's... You know, struggle to to choose between these two worlds. Am, am I human or am I Kryptonian? It's a question I ask myself every single day. And yeah, just just the the I really to anyone who watched The Immortals and judged Henry Cavill based on that Rizzit Cable. Give him another chance. That's all I'm gonna say. In this movie, he is fantastic. Every single actor who portrays Clark Kent in this movie is fantastic. There are like two or three kid actors who portray him. They are phenomenal. The acting in this movie, in general, is really, really good. The, Michael Shannon as Zod, he's not as campy and over the top as Terrence Stamp or Kevin Spacey's Lex Luthor, but I don't know, he's he does well and it's something that's really noteworthy about the characters in this movie is they all have humanity to them. And yes, that goes for the Krypton the, the Kryptonians have Kry Kryptonianism to them. They are Credible, you 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 can sympathize. You might not agree. You might think they are horrible, but you can see where they're coming from. You you don't. No one is just a cardboard cutout, and I I really really appreciate that. When yeah, there's just, there's there's basically no no character who has more like two more than maybe two lines. You know, there's there's maybe one or two just tiny characters who don't really get fully fleshed out, but everyone who's at, who's actually a character gets, yeah, get, and and it's 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 a movie that will get to you. Some of the drama really just grips you and and really. It's, it's not something that you ordinarily think of when you think Zack Snyder, but in addition to making stuff look great and doing these 
big epic action scenes, he can make you care. It's, this movie is not the first time that has happened, but it just I, I think that's maybe something that sometimes gets a bit forgotten among the uh, yeah and the I, I suppose that's a good that's that's a fine time to go into as you may already know this is entirely. It's, it's more Snyder's film than Nolan's. Nolan worked with Goyer on the script, and once he was happy with it, he handed over complete creative control to Zack Snyder. And you can tell, this is not a Nolan film. This has Nolan elements. You can tell that, you know, the Dark Knight guy was a producer here, but he did not direct it, and he did not have, like, final say on it. Or if he did, he did not exercise it. This is very much a Zack Snyder film. You can really tell that this is the guy who did 300 and Watchmen. And it's... And that's, that's a fantastic idea for a couple of reasons. Snyder is more more of a, a good fit for this character. Nolan is it makes sense to get Nolan to do Batman, because Batman is of the shadows. He's tormented, and he's, he's dark, he's bleak. But Superman is this much more idyllic character. And yes, this is a more angsty take on it, but you still have some of these core elements of Superman, which I will get more into. And Zack Snyder really captures that. You are cheering for Superman in this movie, and that's... Yeah, it's a, a fantastic, he, he did fantastic on that. It's also, it's a good idea for DC to kind of say, Nolan's not all we got. You know, just never mind about the Green Lantern movie, but look, Nolan is not all the flavor that, you know, this this bleak, dark superhero and, and Nolan making a lot of money on that, that's not all that DC is. And if they are going to make a Justice League movie, which... If this movie really gets, if, if, if the, I can imagine that, that core fans are going to like this, and many moviegoers in general will like this more than critics have, and, uh, to be fair, I don't really blame all the critics, I think some of them are too harsh, but some of them do definitely also have some, some good points, but, but yeah, I can just, I can imagine that this one will do quite well, and I could see this in the long run leading to a Justice League movie starting up the, as, as far as I understand, this is supposed to start up the shared DC cinematic universe, and yeah, I, I, I want to see Cavill in, in this role again, and I would love to see him in a Justice League movie, see him opposite other great actors, taking on, you know, stretching the acting muscle that he shows in this movie, and, yeah, face-to-face uh, -face with other heroic, yeah, anyway, the, I, yes, to, to, more on the, the, Snyder very much does bring his sense of visuals to this movie, and, from the action scenes, you can really tell that it's him and that he has this great sense of what comic book aesthetic, what that looks like. And that's, you know, that's something you could maybe argue that wasn't, wasn't Nolan's strong suit. Although, I'm not going to get into, too, too into the, the Batman movies here. I have done reviews on them. Anyway, the yeah ba basically he Snyder chose to shoot this on film rather than digital and go for this this handheld cinematography and I wholeheartedly agree with those decisions and where the 
I don't think it was his decision to have it in 3D at all. I don't think he would really have... I think it was just the studio that worked, because 3D makes money. This was post-converted, and you might have already... You, you might have already, like, you know, no right style picked up on a few of those words and put them together and gone, like, error does not compute. Handheld and 3D, yeah. Okay, the, the idea of handheld is it feels like very documentary style. It feels like someone was right there with a the camera just zooming in on interesting stuff and trying to capture what people were saying just when they were saying it, not always completely. It, it feels like... It, it feels real, but in this sort of documented way. 3D puts you right where it is. The two do not work together. It's... It, it really, yeah, they, they, they do not work well together, and it was bordering on the 3D being straining, bordering on, not, not quite there. Bottom line, watch this movie, but don't watch it in 3D, frankly, or, you know, take off the glasses if, if it just is not showing in, in 2D, but, yeah, there's, there's not really much of a reason for watching this in 3D. I would certainly say that it doesn't it doesn't work with the with the handheld. Now the this one very much takes on the you know it's it sort of updates Superman where again like he's initially you know when when the comic book character was created. He, he was this very idyllic, you know, people just needed something to look up to, something to believe in, and, you know, it was right around the, the time of World War II, and, yeah. And there wasn't really much questioning for, like, well, and, and at the time it was also, it was quote-unquote just comic books. They weren't well thought of at the time. Fairly certain. Now, you know, presenting this story, they're, they're being, they're, they're putting him in the real world, much like the Dark Knight trilogy did with Batman. And also, very much, this has no ties to the other films. It does not play the Superman theme, and where the 78 version tries to bring the comic book to life, this one says, that was the comic book. This is this is us taking the comic book and translating it. This is an adaptation, and the the response to aliens among us is realistic. When the it's it's a running theme. How will how will people deal with it when they find out that human beings are not the only intelligent life in the universe? and that's why Clark has to keep his secret. And it, it works really well. It, it feels of this, of, of this period. You know, everyone today is looking for you as well, in certain groups, I should say. And if it was actually proven, it really would change things. People would stop and... Yeah, and, and yeah, the, the government, you've, you've seen the trailers where he's like, you know, handcuffed with, with soldiers around him. The, the American government is like, is this guy dangerous? And it's, it's a great idea to deal with that question also. Now, the... This sets up the, the mythos quite well, the whole, you know, yeah, the, the whole Krypton thing. If you have been living under a rock from, you know, for the last 65 years, if you happen to come from another planet and it isn't Krypton, this movie does explain what's really going on, and it does so without without really bogging down. There's there's never a line like Superman has, you know, super strength, Superman has laser, you know, yeah, heating 
I think an X-ray vision. You just see it. You you see what he can do, and it's it's explained why how how that came to to be that he could do these things, and that's it. They don't yeah they they don't waste any time on it. Now the. The, the effects are, of course, amazing. I, that's almost, almost goes without saying. Now, there are some... The, the again, the, the, I think it was the What the Flick guys brought up that this kind of evokes some 9-11, you know, image imagery or, yeah, I don't personally, I can see the argument against why, you know, against that being okay. I mainly mention it in case anyone watching this video, anyone considering watching the movie, you know, just be prepared. It is in there and I, I, can, I can see the argument for that being kind of, In bad, in poor taste. Along with this having no ties to the previous films and, and the, 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 you know, not playing the Superman theme, the Hans Zimmer score is, you know, original created for this. It's quite good. It has the epic feel to it. It is, again, the, that's where you do kind of feel the Nolan-ish thing. It is very, it's, it's very much like the, the Dark Knight kind of the score. And that's also, at points, this can be kind of loud. I again disagree that it's a kind of ongoing or really excessive thing of the film. It's just, it happens, but I don't know, it's, it's really not too bad. I, I felt... Now, the... I think that might more or less cover it. I will say that the third act, as others have pointed out, is kind of almost just one long action scene. It, again, it's spaced out enough and you get to breathe in between, but it is a bit, it, it really didn't need to be as much as it is. Or it should have done more different things with that. The, the, the action scenes are a little too similar for there to be that many. Now... When Superman first flies, it's it's like when you first see Iron Man fly in the original 08 movie. It's not not in any kind of I'm, I'm not suggesting plagiarism. I'm saying it's it, it really pulls you in and it, it it has you along for the ride and you really feel the the wonder of it. That's also a great example. Of, Superman and Clark Kent just being a human being, the joy on his face when he's flying for that first time is just, you know, this is a young man who's just found out he can fly. Of course he's going to get a kick out of it. He's, he's having the time of his life doing that. And, yeah, you just, you, you can't, you, you can totally see yourself in him there. And that's, that's really impressive for for Superman, you know. I think that more or less covers it. There were a few things that bothered me somewhat. The, the movie is... There, there are some... some elements where it goes a bit far in... This is very much the, the, what's it called?
this this is very much an American icon, and it, it gets a lot of that right, but at points it also goes a bit far in... Yeah, it's... it's for those others, it will bother. There are points of this where it seems slightly anti-science and a little... a little overly black and white. But with that, that of course also reminds me, I definitely do have to mention this, as, as promised, expanding on how this gets a lot of Superman right. And that's also something I definitely want to mention. That's also something that's been brought up in reviews. Does this movie have a reason to exist? The last Superman movie was only in oh, six, you know, seven years ago. And that one wasn't exactly... Wasn't really what people wanted of the... So, yes, this movie definitely has a reason to exist. And I say that... I haven't really... I, I've, I haven't said what I think of the, the 78 version in this video. I want to make it absolutely clear. I respect that movie very much as it... It really started comic book, you know, comic books being put up on the screen. That was a time where you they, they really said, no, you know, we're, we're just going to, yeah, this is what's in the comic, and we're going to put it up on the screen, and we're going to take it seriously. And, we're, and, and it works. And that movie is a really great piece of work, and there are a lot of great things about it. But I will say that there are some things that this does that that one did not. And I, and f for that reason, it really, it, it deserves to exist and it deserves to be watched by many, many people. This really gets the core of Superman. You see how inspiring he is. You see how he... This, this, you know, to, to caught between two worlds kind of thing, and how, yeah, in, in a way he has to, to choose. Uh, note that I'm not saying that all of this is different from the 78 version, but, yeah. Those of you who've watched that movie, you will probably be able to tell what I'm saying is different. And, yeah, he's, he's having to make this choice, and you... You can, you can follow his his thinking. You can you can understand why it's why it's a conflict, and yeah, it's and and Superman again. The, you, you see Clark Kent as a child. You see how alone he can he can feel, and everyone has at some point in their lives felt alone, and there is something to, to, to say that, that you can come from that, that you can feel weak and alone, you can feel confused, you don't know who you are, you don't know your place in this world, you can come from that and you can become, you know, not literally Superman, but you can become a great force of good to get all schmaltzy on you. That's Superman. That's that's you. You can come from an and that's American. That's that's the American dream. This this little nobody. This this kid who grew up on a farm in Arkansas and he wait Kansas. Sorry, and he he grows up and becomes this person to look up to. That's the American dream right there, and that is Superman. That's something to really... Zack Snyder gets Superman, and, and so does... You know, I, I don't know, I, I haven't like read the, the exact script. I don't know exactly how much of it, how much of it is also Goyer and, and Nolan, but bottom line, they get Superman. This, this is clearly understanding. Superman. You, you really get this whole thing of, you know, also this very American thing of, of where Superman is, this, he is 
an immigrant and he yeah he, he might feel rootless and he still becomes something great and he he's willing to put a lot of effort and to, to risk to, to, to help others and that's yeah, that it's it's a, a really it really captures that, and without putting uh, too fine a point on it either. Again, it's it's pretty good with showing rather than telling. And also, I will say yes, there is some like religious symbolism and you know, product placement and stuff like that that have, have also been mentioned in reviews. I didn't really think it was too bad. It, I don't know, maybe it will bother other people more. But, yeah, I recommend it. I definitely w will, if, if at all this interests you, if you are even a casual like comic book fan or action movie fan, or you just like a, a story about someone trying to find themselves, I mean, this this can work even just as a, a one of one of these what is it called the, the the hero's journey it you know you you can go into just the the hero's journey if if you just like the hero's journey kind of story and you want to see a good one of those yeah it's great acting it, yeah I I'm I'm gonna be repeating myself if I continue but just yeah. Great movie. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.